I'm glad you've come, though I'm afraid there's little in the way of good news. After you left, we reached out to both the Alchemist's Guild and Stillglade Fane and attempted all manner of treatments. But the results were always the same. Whatever the answer is, it's not alchemy or conjury. Why did it have to be Yishtola and Orianger and not me? Out of all of us, they are the ones who could feasibly have solved this puzzle. And Elfano's still missing. God, it's all going wrong. Where do we even start? A grave situation indeed. Might I be of some assistance? Kryle! I thought you busy delving into the mysteries of Eureka. When word reached me of the plight of our friends, I could not well stay away. As a fellow scion, not to mention your erstwhile mentor, this is one of those times you should feel free to call on me regardless of my personal circumstances. I... yes, I should have thought of that. Thank you for coming, Kryle. We would welcome your insight. And I should be happy to provide it. Now, what's this I hear about Alphano heading into Imperial territory? That boy always did have some funny ideas. Do you remember the speech he gave when he was accepted to the studium? My life's goal is not less than the salvation of this star. <laughs> well, that particular grand pronouncement has been a source of great embarrassment to him, as you know. But, the fact of the matter is, he meant every word and has lived his life accordingly. Yes, he remains altruistic to a fault, but I'm worried he was too fixated on his goals to see the dangers, as has happened before. You needn't be so concerned. Though his values remain the same, Alphano is not the blinkered boy he once was. Slowly but surely his eyes have been opened, thanks to a certain someone. A certain someone whom he'd be mortified to learn had heard about his little speech. Mum's the word, eh? Right, I'd better have a look at our patients. They're in the infirmary, I assume. I'll need absolute quiet, so it would be best if I did this alone. If you'll excuse me. All three are in fine physical health. At a glance, I would say they were merely sound asleep. Except for the fact that I couldn't sense the slightest trace of them in their bodies. It's as if their souls have taken leave of their physical forms. Ah, yes. The Elder Seed Seer made a similar observation. I've read the report. When you heard this mysterious voice, you described feeling as if you were somewhere else, yes? If we assume the ether which comprises your essence is being drawn to some other place, then it may be possible to follow the trail it leaves behind, just as we did in our search for Thancred. I wasn't around for that, but I can't imagine it was easy. Oh, it wasn't. But that's no reason not to try. I will have need of Master Matoya's crystal eye if I'm even to make the attempt. So, I suggest we pay her a visit.
come to disturb my peace again, have you? I hide myself away in a cave, and still you people insist on pestering me with your problems. Oh, I mistook you for young what's-his-name, but I see now you're the sister. Weren't you supposed to be the lively one? I've seen happier faces at a rain-sodden burial. Well, I'm sorry to dash your expectations, but the situation isn't exactly conducive to gaiety. Ha! That's more like it. Stoller used to spit and hiss like a wildcat, too. Better for a young thing like you to be filled with fire and leave the doom and gloom to your elders. Now, what exactly does this tragic situation of yours have to do with me? If I may, Master Matoya, we have need of your crystal eye once more. Stola is one of the afflicted, is she? Very well. She may be an ungrateful stray, but she's my ungrateful stray, and I'll not see her buried before I am. Right. Let us see what we can see. I'll begin from where our friends first fell, and cast my senses out from there. What is it? Did you find them? This, this doesn't make sense. How is it even possible? How is what possible? Kryle, what did you see? The, th the threads, they just... they just ended. And, and no, I didn't lose track of them. I followed them as far as they went. It's as if... It's as if they were cut off. Could the ether have dissipated if it had? Oh, oh, gods! Their bodies are just husks. It's like the brood mother's daughter all over again. No, no, th this is different. The Kalyana girl was already dead, body and soul, when Lakshmi affected her resurrection. Aye, let's not jump to conclusions. If their physical forms yet breathe, and show no signs of wasting, then it follows that their souls must still be intact somewhere. But where? That's the question, isn't it, girl? Death has not taken them to the ethereal sea, yet there are no tracks left for us to follow. We're no closer to an answer than when we started. But knowing their souls are still out there is progress of a sort. We just have to keep looking. Pray, excuse me a moment. Yes? I remember, but... What, to Alamigo? We're on our way. That was Lise. 
Apparently, a group of popularis have defected to Alamigo, and Maxima, the envoy Alphano left with, is one of them. I'm sorry. I realize we've barely begun here, but... Go, child, go! You've made up your mind, and life's too short for dithering. I'll do some digging in the meantime, and see if there isn't some other method we could use to continue the search. Let's be off, then. Oh, not again. The enchantment barely seems to take these days. I chalk it up to old age, but I rather doubt it's that simple. Before they took ill, Yishtola and Orianger were sharing notes on a thinning of the ether. It seems to be happening all over. Does it now? And here I was, all set to blame my woes on that creaking mountain of refuse clogging up the Thaliank. I fear something has gone awry. Still, there's naught to be gained from starting at shadows. You can only do what can be done, and that but one thing at a time.